Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And yes, this is the very first video with my new camera. We're taking a look at a brand new knife that I've not reviewed any of before. This is the brand Critical Strike. This is the S503L. I wonder if they make a small version, if the L stands for that. It's got uh, an access lock, so easy to deploy the blade using that feature. And we've got a cutout section here and flicking it out the bottom can work. It just takes a little bit of extra wrist action because the access lock puts constant pressure on the tang of the blade, which makes it a little bit harder to come out, but it's got fairly smooth interface between the tang of the blade and the access lock bar. So it does slide open and closed fairly well. I think I'll stay with it focused back over here just because it's I'm still getting used to this. I just have it set on automatic. I have to learn this camera before I can uh, do a really good job with it. And Bandit's just wanting to bark a lot. So this knife comes in this green. It's not an OD green. It's, it's a different kind of more muted green. It comes in bright orange or black. And that's the way it comes. I got mine from AliExpress, paid full retail. So this is not a sponsored video in any way, shape or form. Let's put this thing to the tabletop and take a good look at it. Keep watching. The first thing that I want to let you know is, yes, I am not that familiar with this camera yet. I'm not sure how to set up the uh, focus and all those kinds of things properly or well or better than it is. So I'm just using, like I said in the intro, the automatic feature so you can take a good look at this knife. We've got a saber grind, which is a flat grind that does not come all the way to the spine. Uh, there's the logo of the brand Critical Strike. There is a C on the inside and then an S line through it. And then the words Critical Strike. The only other writing on the knife is on this side here. It says D2 on there and then S503L. I like that the writing on it is not too very big. But I do wish that this logo maybe was up here instead of, you know, on the bevel. I really don't like writing on the bevels themselves. Not too bad. The blade shape, I call this a modified clip point, not a reverse tanto. And I've said this many times. This edge is not sharp. So why would I call it a tanto if this edge isn't sharp? It just has the one, one grind. There's only one edge. So not a tanto in any of my, you know, the way I describe things anyways. It's got a gentle belly all the way along. The sharpening from the factory is done quite well. We've got the main section here between my fingers is one angle, and then it gets steeper both on the tip and on the heel on both sides. But the main middle section, three quarters of the knife is pretty much all one angle and it's right around 20 degrees on both sides. So they did a pretty good job sharpening it. Access lock right here. Uh, you pull back on the access lock and the blade is just free swinging. It's got ball bearings, steel ball bearings in there. So that's pretty good. There's no skeletonizing in here. You uh, haven't got anything to see in there. In my most recent access lock knife video that I reviewed, you know, it was a pain putting that knife back together again. So I'm not going to show you the insides of this knife, but I did find a video on this knife by, uh, I think it's a Russian YouTuber, Nashorn or something like that, N-A-S-H-O-R-N. The first uh, 20 seconds of his video about this knife show it taken apart. So I'll put a link to that down below so you can very easily see what this knife looks like taken apart. There's really not much to see because, you know, there's no skeletonizing. We've got G10. It's a flat G10 to start with. We've got a significant bevel across here and then another bevel here. And then all the edges are chamfered even into the section here where you've got the lanyard hole backspacer. And uh, yeah, comfortable in the hand for the handle. Easy to hold. Different grips are comfortable. You know, the angle back here gets your thumb in there quite well. Fist grip, saber grip. Yeah, it's okay. I would like some jimping up here maybe for you know better grip. 
it's uh, right around an eighth of an inch thick here, just a tiny bit over. So there's lots of steel to get your thumb behind. That's a good thing. The access lock fully engages very, very well. I have to go a little bit lower. I can't quite get this on camera. You might be able to see that there's a line that goes across this way. That That's where the access lock rides up to. So that's over an eighth of an inch deep that the lock pin comes up. Very safe and sound. Maybe if you look inside there, you can even see the tang of the blade on this side of the pin. So very good. Solid lock up. Spine whack test, no problem. Didn't move at all. There's no blade play up and down. Little bit of blade play side to side. I have not adjusted this screw yet. It has not come loose during use. So I think that's how they did it at the factory. It's just a tiny, tiny bit. I'll tighten that up a little bit and see. But I suspect if I tighten that up, then the blade will no longer be free swinging like that. So I like a nice free swing, swinging blade. It makes the fidgeting of the knife a whole lot easier to do. So opening it, closing it. It's very fun to do. It's not too terribly loud, easy to play with. Uh, the inside edge here, I forgot to mention it before, it's also chamfered all the way around in that hole. So that's a good thing. The uh, It's not really a sharpener's toil. It's the way access locks are made. There's a spot there. I'll turn it this way because I think I've got the close-up picture done this way. In this section right here, you can see some wear marks. That's where the stop pin hits when the blade closes. So that's why there's a cutout here. So very common to have just an angle cutout like this on axis lock knives. The cutout comes far enough past the plunge so you can sharpen all the way to the heel without sharpening up into the plunge. So that's a good thing. I would like a plunge that doesn't, uh, you know, go really wide here and narrow at the tip. I wouldn't mind it if it stayed, you know, parallel to the line on the ricasso so that you could have more of a sharp edge, but not a big deal. It's all the way around on the front here. It's not a good spot to put your finger. Your finger can slide either down or towards the cutting edge. It's, so it's not designed as a forward grip. Before I get into what I really dislike about the pocket clip, let's talk a little bit about the lanyard hole. I don't like it. I do like that it's inset with the backspacer because you put paracord through here and you can tie it off and it doesn't bulk up and out. So that's a really good thing. But the placement is in a terrible spot. You're gonna hold the knife, take the blade out like this. Well, what's gonna to happen to that cordage that's right here? It's just gonna get into your, your the palm of your hand right here and create pressure points. If they would have put it at the end of the handle instead of on the spine of the handle, that would be a much wiser deal. I do like though that they put it had it inset. One thing that they failed, the G10 has been milled out by a CNC machine. They just did a quick little run with the cutting tool through there and they didn't make it go past the start and end point enough. So there's a buildup right there of G10 material and it's a bump. I've got a small file. I'll be able to get in there and file that out easily enough, but not everybody's got a nice small set of files. So that would hook on your paracord and maybe cause it to start fraying. And then, you know, that's a bit of a mess if you're using a lanyard. So don't like that so much. The thing that I dislike the most about this knife is this right here. Look at the size of that pocket clip. From the surface of the handle to here, that is very, very deep. Like, I mean, I could get four pockets in there. <laughs> It's a lot of space. Button screws, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter if you've got button screws, if you've got lots of space here, but even with those button screws, there's way more space than is needed. So the pocket clip eats into the palm of the hand as well, just like a big lanyard in there would. And that's a hot spot right on this section of the palm of my hand when I grab it, you know, and give it a good squeeze. Worse in the left hand because it creases into the last two fingers right here. Not very good at all. 
and it is a, a right side pocket clip only. It's a decent pocket clip other than the fact that it sticks out so far. I just don't understand that. Let's go get my pair of pants and take a look at how well it goes in. So with this edge over here that's flattened out, it does want to go over right away. So that's a good thing. And it just slides all the way to the bottom. And we've got a load. Let's put this down way down here. We've got a load of space in here. We could fit lots of stuff right in there. But when it's in there, it's hidden well. You know, the black G10 would be well hidden. This is very shiny, but you know, I like that. Not bad at all. With these two holes in here, it does help your thumb to get some purchase to pull the knife out. I like holes or some kind of texture better than totally smooth pocket clips. But it's not terrible. It's just not good. Every knife has to have some flaws, right? Let's take some time to go over all the uh, measurements and the specs and that kind of stuff. We'll leave this on the corner of the screen while we go over those things. The weight of this knife, 110 grams, 3.9 ounces. The factory sharpness measured right about where my finger is right now, 195 best, 200 and less is considered sharp. So not bad. I did a lot of testing after that. It's quite a bit worse than 195 best right now, but this is D2 steel. It behaved it like D2 steel. So I suspect it's genuine D2 steel. So the Rockwell hardness on here is probably around 90, 59. I was gonna say 95, probably around 59. The measurements now, the cutting edge length, 84 millimeters. That's 3.307 inches. The blade length tip to the G10 here, 87.1 millimeters, 3.429 inches. The thickness of the blade measured back here at the Ricasso, it is 3.14 millimeters, that's 0.1355 inches. So like I said, a bit over an eighth of an inch. The depth of the blade, the widest point in the cutting edge area right here, 26 millimeters, that's 1.0235 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, measured right about where my thumbnail is now, 0.48 millimeters, 19 thousandths of an inch. So that's well within the spec that I like. The grind angles. Well, like I said before, the grind angles are a little bit off, but not bad at all. I've got a sheet here. Let's see, this way is the worst side. It's about 20 degrees between the section where my fingers are. Right about here at the end, at the heel, 22.2. Right here at the tip, for about a quarter of an inch, 24.3. Not terrible. On this side, the same thing, about 20 degrees right in here. At the tip, 21.7. At the heel, 21.8. So they did a pretty decent job of sharpening this knife compared to what I see in a lot of knives these days. Talking about the handle now. The handle length, 11.53 centimeters, that's 4.539 inches. The grip area, depends on where you measure it. I'm saying it's about 11 centimeters, about four and a quarter inches in the grip area. So a lot of grip, even for extra large hands. The thickness of the handle, not counting the pocket clip, 13.1 millimeters, that's 0.516 inches. So just over half an inch, not bad. The handle depth, Within the grip area, the biggest spot is right there, 25.2 millimeters, 0.992 inches. The knife, the biggest depth this way, the width, 32.1 millimeters, 1.2635 inches when it's closed. And the total length of the knife when the blade is deployed from tip to the very end, 20.21 centimeters, that's 7.957 inches. So eight inch knife, We've got almost three and a half inch blade, a little over four inch handle. That is very well done. The balance point is right there. If they would have skeletonized the knife, the balance point could be here. I would prefer it about here. It's not terrible because like I said, it's 3.9 ounces as it is. So it's not an excessively heavy knife, full size knife. How much is this knife gonna set you back? Well, I got this from AliExpress 
And uh, since the time I ordered this, AliExpress, very few vendors on there are shipping to Canada anymore. I had, uh, I had, I think I had this shipped to my friend in Nebraska. The price has gone down since I ordered it. Right now, it is twenty dollars and forty-one cents American, and to ship to the United States, there's a charge of three dollars and sixteen cents. So not bad at all. Twenty-three fifty-seven American for this knife. It's well within a budget range. So this is available in most countries around the world. Unfortunately, Canadians, you'll have to get this shipped. Uh, to somebody else and have them mail it to you. Unless you're going to buy this one, which I am probably will be selling in the future. Pay attention to my channel for the knife sale times. Um, please do not write to me and ask to buy one of my knives. I, I used to do that, but it's just cre created too much um, confusion and frustration on who's, which knife I'm holding for who and that kind of thing, so I no longer do that. Uh, there are a few deals that I still have in the works. I will honor those. Uh, I'm just not taking any more orders unless it's through a knife sale video. And I might have one in the uh, late February, but probably it'll happen in early early uh, March, the next one. So what do I think of this knife overall? I kind of like it. It's a good design. It feels good in the hand, mostly, especially if you take the pocket clip off. I will probably, if I would keep it, I would heat this up and bend it so that it came in a little closer to the handle and then the pocket clip would be more comfortable. Since I don't use paracord for, la I don't use lanyards at all really, paracord or whatever they're made of, I don't mind that the lanyard hole is where it is. I'm not fond of button screws that are, you know, inset like that. But these screws are not bad. They're not high quality screws, but they've not been stripped out at the factory. So not a big deal. We've got uh, screw heads on either side for this one. I should double check. I'm going to do it right now to see if this has a free spinning pivot or not. I'll test it here on the camera with you. There's a little bit of play in there. Uh, these drivers aren't necessarily the most accurate. Let me test it with this German driver. Yeah, that's a much better fit. There's very little play in there. Let's see. That feels like it's locked right there. Yes, definitely. It's not a free spinning pivot. I would have preferred if they would just had a flat surface here instead of a screw head because people are tempted to put screwdrivers where there's a screw head. And then they end up stripping it out because this side will not turn. And then you might just, you know, torque it too hard and make a mess of things. So if it doesn't move too easily, then that's because it's not supposed to move. It feels like they might have a little bit of Loctite in here, but maybe not. Yeah, they've got a little bit of something in there, but it was not really, really tight. So that's a good thing. And I do like that it's uh, not a free spinning pivot pin, so good job. Let's tighten this back up. Blade centering, very good. It's not perfect, but it's very good indeed. Not anywhere near close to touching the liners anywhere. So you can see that not too much wrist action is required to flip the blade out. Well, there you go, I'm doing it without any. I think I just adjusted it just enough that I can now flick it out. Index finger, middle finger I'm not that good at with flicking them out, but index finger. Oh, I got it middle finger that time. So yeah, it's a cool knife. I like that it's not your standard OD green. It's like a similar though. It's just a little bit off or you can get black or orange. Very nice. If you are in the market for this knife, I've got a link down below to make it easy for you to buy it. It's a referral link which will help to support the channel. If you want to support the channel in other ways, such as becoming a Patreon supporter, I would appreciate that very much. Every bit of help is very, very welcome. Thank you again to everyone who helped me get this camera. I very much appreciate it. Uh, without you, I'd still be using that cell phone and who knows when that thing's going to completely die. 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Remember, friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.